Welcome to my channel. I'm Canny Gaiman. My name's Mark. Here we are with part four of Vranya Skye, the city on the hill. Um, I did think that, that perhaps I might end this series after part three. Uh, we got to the end of part three and we declared that many of the problems were fixed. If you haven't seen parts one to three, I would recommend that you go back and watch them. Perhaps you should watch them first and they will help understand the problems in this city. But unfortunately, everything wasn't fixed. And while we fixed a problem with the heating system at the end of part three, we still had a problem throughout the whole winter. But what we particularly had a problem with was that as I tried to identify the issue with the heating and then fix it, the game was playing. Now, one of the issues that you have with troubleshooting in this game is that you often have to have the game playing, that uh, game time is advancing, so that you have people moving around, you have buses, you have uh, lorries moving around your city so you can see where they're going, and what they're doing, etc, etc. The problem is, of course, is if you have the game playing while you're doing something like putting in a new heating pump, which is what we were doing, we realized that there was a problem with the heating system here. We realized there was a problem with the um, this small heating plant because the person who built the city had tried to connect large pipes to a small heating pump and you can't do that. So I had to replace it with a, a big pump so of course we no longer need this small heating pump. We can delete this, we can demolish it. So we may as well get rid of that. Now you see I've to demolish it to get that ex sort of explosion to air effect to come up. I had to unpause the game. And you see now we have a heap of rubble and that will be there for a little while uh, because I've gone back into pause and it won't disappear unless I allow the game to advance. It, takes a few hours of game time and there we go there it's gone so um so here i've brought up on the screen that we did have a notification message about a heating problem in the city and that it did report that it was a problem with the grocery store of which we can come back here the grocery store and the shopping center were both cold they weren't getting any heating and we identified this maybe around about this time in mid-October, just as the temperature was really starting to drop. By the time we'd actually worked out what the problem was with the heating exchanger not being connected via the heating pump and then fixed it, the city had lost a load of people and it was already in a death spiral. Uh, that was difficult to get out of. I, however, I can't blame just the heating problem uh, through that month as we approached into November when the snow started uh, because there was two other problems. One was with the water system and one was with the sewage. Now I'm probably going to make two further episodes at least I'm getting quite attached to Vranya Skaya and I, it's quite uh, interesting to do this and I hope it's interesting to other people that there has some people watch it and get something out of this and learn a little bit more about uh, about the game. Uh, I'm going to look today at sewage. We've got a city that originally had over 7,000 people in it. Uh, we've got these Great big four, uh, sorry, eight tower blocks, each of which hold 593 people when they are full. They're not full now. We've only got about 4,000 people living in our city. But when I was playing through in part three, I think by the time we got to mid-November or about November the 22nd when the snow starts, we were already lost maybe about uh, 1,000 people. And when you lose that number of people in a short period of time people stop turning up for work 
those people uh, are, are not going to work in the shops they're not going to work in the heating plant they're not going to work in the water treatment etc etc and and that then just causes extra problems there was two problems with the infrastructure that were uh, also killing this game now we looked at the heating and I, i'm just going to go back over that again uh, because this is the heat exchanger that wasn't getting any hot water at all uh, through the, the the heating pump that wasn't working and you know at first i thought ah perhaps the two shops were out of range they're not out of range uh the uh you can see that the two shops that are these two buildings here at the uh the lowest buildings in the city apart from the two construction offices but these are the the, the lowest buildings in the city you know the, this whole city is built on a hill uh, there's a customs office right at the top of the hill these are at the lowest point of the hill um the they were within range of the heat and exchanger but so were many other buildings that um that didn't have the same problem and the reason for that is there's there's two heat exchanges in the city there's a one here as well and this one is a little bit further up the hill in fact actually what's what's actually quite strange is that these have been built so close together uh that is a little odd and i think it might have made more sense to put the heat and exchanger let me just grab a heat and exchanger there's a a large heat and exchanger so instead of putting it here because we've got one here that serves most of these uh, buildings you see it connects up to the apartment blocks but it also connects down to most of the most of the amenity buildings the the restaurant the the cinema the um swimming pool and the concert hall you know it, it, and, and unfortunately it just doesn't go as far as the the two shops um this one in this position does but it would it might have made more sense to build one on this side of the city now i uh, you say you could you could have placed it sort of here where near the university anyway we were unfortunate the two buildings that were um, outside of the range of the heat and exchanger that worked happened to be the two shops and we've commented before on the importance of getting uh, food and meat to people and originally in this city these were the only two shops there was no other shops uh, we have since built uh, this very large shopping center close to the apartment blocks and that has solved most of our problems with food and meat and as well as clothes and electronics clothes and electronics less important but the, but the food and meat is is absolutely essential so in fact there's a there's a design question with this city about the layout of the city i think that that it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to have placed the two shops that were originally built this far away from all the apartment blocks um you know if we go to one of these apartment blocks we go to the lost one down the hill we can i'll just um i'll just pin that and then if we view the buildings that can be reached on foot we can see that citizens can actually walk down the hill and they can walk quite far they can walk to the ferris wheel here the university this is the indoor pool the swimming pool uh, they can walk to this building here but that's the road depot there's there's no reason for them to go there there's a freebie gas station here they can walk that far but again there's no reason for them to walk to that and they can walk i believe they can walk yes um no they can't they can't quite walk to the heating exchanger but heat and exchanges don't need people to work to work there as uh, is again there's no reason for people to walk to a heat exchanger um so uh, they can get to the hospital here and they can get to these other buildings now i'd forgot these other buildings were here to be on saturn took much notice originally we had block nine apartment block here 
that had been built by the player who had been um, struggling to get people to come down to this part of the city on buses. So they'd eventually put block nine, is, nine in. And I guess that that was probably the case. I assumed it was particularly to do with getting people to work at the water well and the water treatment plant, which were originally down here. And in part three, I built my own up the hill and I've uh, demolished these. And I've since demolished block nine, got rid of it because I wanted to prove that we could have all of the citizens, citizens living in the eight blocks up the hill and still use all these amenities down the hill. So in fact, there's a shop, um, sorry, a school here. Um, uh, nobody's using it at all. So we can we can get rid of that. Now these are kindergartens. So there's actually staff there. And I think they can just about walk here. Uh, yeah, they can. And there's some babies here. Now, a baby will never come on a bus. The staff would come on a bus. So, so maybe some of them are coming on the buses. But babies will never go on a bus to a kindergarten. A kindergarten must be within walking range of the parents' home. So we have kindergartens here. We have four of them close to the apartment blocks. So really these two apart these two kindergartens I think were probably built originally for block nine and they just happened to be just within walking distance of the the main eight apartment blocks that are left now. So actually I don't want them to be used. We will delete these, we'll demolish these as well. And look, there's no babies in this one anyway. There's staff there, 10 staff, they're wasting the time. So um, I'll get rid of that. And then this one is yet another school and it only has one student uh, because we have a couple of schools up here. Okay, so, so, so the city has been built with this area where we have eight great big apartment blocks in the center arranged around this sort of central plaza with the two Lenin statues and the bus stop. And right next to them are four kindergartens and two schools to educate children. So we don't need another one down here. And uh, as I say, uh, there's only one student in the classrooms anyway, and three teachers and nine staff who are, who are doing nothing. So I'm gonna demolish that one as well. So let's just allow those all to disappear so we we were a little off track but I uh, the, the the point I was making was that the citizens from the apartment blocks can walk down the hill towards some of our amenities but the ones that are furthest away they have to get a bus and that includes the two shops so to get to the two shops, they have to get a bus. They have to go to a bus stop. They have to wait for a bus. They're only allowed to wait for up to an hour. So if your buses don't come very often, many of your people give up. They, they, they won't wait more than an hour at a bus stop. Um, they manage then to get on a bus. The bus takes a couple of hours. Now, this is a surprising length of time, but, but this is actually true. If I look at one of these buses, and we look at, for instance, one of the people on the bus. What we've got is we've got Daria here. And we just click on Daria so that we can see the window and the text is then a bit easier to, to read. We find that Daria has spent a total traveling time of three hours and 30 minutes out of five hours. So they allowed five hours traveling time uh, to, um, oh, Daria is going to work by the way. Um, Daria is a worker. Uh, they are about to start their working shift and we know that because here it tells you the working shift is zero hours, zero minutes out of eight hours. If they were a passenger, they'd be in free time and the free time would show the free time which has a maximum of 16 hours free time 
when they're working they have eight hours shift a working shift of eight hours so they haven't actually started work yet they haven't arrived at a workplace so Dari is currently traveling to work and they have a maximum of allowed of five hours to get to work I imagine that if you had to spend five hours uh, uh, in real life traveling to work uh, and they are currently traveling in a vehicle and they have been traveling for two hours 37 minutes out of four hours so they're allowed a maximum of four hours on the bus and they've already spent two hours and 37 minutes on this bus so you can see that the total traveling time means that they've spent nearly an hour at a bus stop so they spent what would that have been it would have been uh, seven minutes less than an hour 53 minutes at the bus stop uh, next to the apartment blocks uh, waiting for a bus so they only just managed to get on this bus if the bus had took any longer to arrive they would have given up they managed to get on the bus they've come down to this station oh this is the, sorry this bus stop this bus stop is the first stop on the route and it is not far from the apartment blocks this is not a huge city and i think this is something that is not easily appreciated because it's not easily seen on the interface uh, that how long it takes for uh, buses to, to travel around so what we did was we shortened the bus routes to um, make them travel more often but it is really surprising that it takes two hours 37 minutes just to get down to here if the bus route was any longer then they would get the four hours and they'd get off the bus they just get off the bus um, when uh, it's traveling they don't even wait for the next stop they teleport off the bus and go home i uh, you know that the, 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 they give up the journey completely so um so what we've got is daria could have got off at this stop and then from this stop there is a walking distance uh, before they go to work and of course they could have worked at the water treatment plant or the water well uh, before we demolished them uh, but now they, they would have to work at say there's a substation a water substation a power substation there then they can't go to work at them so they, they'd have to work have to walk to that shop you see it's 283 meters to the little shopping center and the grocery store which is next to the Lennon statue this building here is outside of the range of walking now imagine they're a passenger so they're a passenger who is looking for food they come down to the bu this bus stop they've, they've waited nearly an hour to get on a bus and many people uh, have given up and, and and haven't got on the bus in the first place the bus takes a couple of hours to get here they get off this bus they walk the 283 meters down this road and they get to the shopping center here and they find there's no food in here because the deliberately the player had, had not provided food because they thought oh well, it's fine there's another shop close by and that's got food in it but you see that in fact um the other shop would have been out of the range of the bus stop now it's important to realize that actually that doesn't matter as much as you might think i uh, they are allowed a maximum of 400 meters and uh, and this will depend on footpaths and the the weather i think the the weather the snow will will limit that um, uh, more but the normally they'd walk about 400 meters uh, isn't a maximum that they're allowed to walk in a day it's a maximum in one journey so once they get to this small shopping center if they then had bought some clothes for instance then they're allowed another journey 
uh, you know, unless that 16 hours has run out, they allowed another journey to go somewhere else. And they, then they could have chose one of the other buildings. Now they might have chose to go to the cinema, the swimming pool, uh, or the Ferris wheel, but they could have chose to get to the other shop. It is within 400 meters and they would have then been able to get food. So it is possible for them to do it, but it is a quite a difficult set of circumstances. And you say it's the only way they could have done it. They could not walk from the buildings down to here. They, they had to make that difficult bus journey uh, and they had to then make two walks, one to the first shop and then one to the, the, the second one, uh, just to find food. Now, unfortunately, of course, as, I, as I've mentioned, then these two shops that were not only built furthest away and might have been built closer, and, and I'll just show you that we could have built them closer because of course, um, if we go to here to, I uh, say a grocery store, you know, th there's room to fit a grocery store here. Uh, it's a little bit awkward because you have to have a, a road connection, but I think we could have put the road connection underneath the heating pipes or put the heating pipes underground to, to allow a, water, uh, a road connection there. But there's also space here to put a grocery store. And originally there was space here that I, where I built the bus end station. Um, it looks like the space here, but there isn't. You can't build here because it's part of the grounds of the university. So you can't build in this sort of corner. That's all part of the the university. Um, you know, but but we could have put a shop uh, much closer to the apartment blocks and then it would have been within walking distance and the the citizens would have found that much easier to get to. So it's a, it's a little unfortunate that these two shops were so far away in the first place, but then that's had the double jeopardy that in the winter, those two shops never got heated. Uh, they were cold and people will not work in a, in a workplace that has no heating. Um, so we soon had a situation where, where nobody was working. Now, having fixed the heating problem, we say that these two buildings now are at 24 degrees and we have no problem with re being reported about heating in this building. But we do have a problem with sewage. Now, I think I'd seen this message come up before but because we were in the center of, or in the middle of a winter, the bad winter, really uh, cold, that we'd had a problem with heating already. I was very focused on the heating through the winter and I didn't come back and look at why there was a problem with sewage. So that's what I want to do today. We've talked about a few of the issues before we get to the, the meat of the problem. But today we are going to look at sewage. I had touched on sewage. We looked at water and we looked at the fact that we can build our water system uh, from the top of the hill coming down and using the fact that we have gravity. And we have to do the same with sewage. So sewage has to flow downhill. Uh, in fact, it's even more sense essential with sewage that that's what happens. I put the contours on so that we can say, you know, I think you can visually see it anyway, that, that this is all uh, on a hill and um, the the shops are, are at the lowest point. Uh, they were looking up the hill there through the, the, the road through the, the middle of the apartment blocks uh, and up at the top of that road is a customs house. So we have to use the fact that this is all built on a hill for the sewage. Now, let me just go underground F3. And what we've got is we've got these thick white lines are the sewage pipes. They're much easier to see underground, by the way, than uh, some of the other infrastructure underground. So water pipes, for instance, are much narrower. Oh, well, there's a water pipe, you see, you see the difference. 
there there's a water pipe here next to the university and here's a sewage pipe the sewage pipes are much thicker and um, much more easy to see underground and we can see that that the sewage pipes here are all coming down the hill here and they end up along this this slope all the way down here to the sewage discharge in the river um, let me just go above ground again and take the contours off so that you see the 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 hill that we're built on here uh, sloping down to this river uh, it's it's fairly dramatic anyway the sewage pipes are coming down this hill and i think i looked at briefly at the sewage and said ah oh, the sewage is working fine now when we go back underground what we see is that we get to this point and the sewage splits in two there's a part that goes um, up towards the apartment blocks and the heating and um, the power plant uh, and there's this other part that goes off to the right here and that goes almost directly underneath the the Lennon statue next to the two shops now I have to say I thought that these two shops must have been fed by that sewage pipe but they're not um, strangely enough and these these sewage pipes are a little odd but they work and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the overlays for sewage flow and straight away that you see uh, here we have a circle and a 2.46 cubic meters and that's telling us that um, there is a sewage flowing through this um, this bit of the, the sewage system right and we come up here and we have the same sort of thing sewage 2.46 sewage 2.45 sewage 2.45 sewage 2.37 so all the way along here is is sewage flowing here uh, almost directly underneath the two shops um so it's a bit strange and and let's just look at that how this is 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 arranged uh what we have is these sort of steps here it's very it's a bit odd when you first look at this if you're not very familiar with the the way the game works so when we have water, we can have water pumps and the player had to use water pumps to pump the water up the hill. And what a water pump does is it just provides an electric motor that spins around and puts pressure on the water. In this case, they had to use big water pumps. I think there was three or four of them uh, to put a lot of pressure on the water to get it to flow uphill. Now you can't do that with sewage you cannot increase the pressure on sewage uh, it oh, you know <laughs> i guess we all know what's in sewage but it, it 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 flows fairly slowly and you cannot pump it in the same way as you can with with normal water so what happens is to get it to go sort of uh, uphill uh, you use these which are also described as sewage pumps so if we go to the plumbing menu um, we have sewage pumps and we have three of them three vanillas uh, uh, ones that we can choose from and they are five meters ten meters and fifteen meters and the the meters relates to how far underground they go so a five meter one goes five meters underground 10 meter one goes 10 meters underground and the 15 which is what they've used here goes 15 meters underground and what you see is i uh, you see all of that is all of that is actually underground so let me just let me just escape and go back above ground so look that tiny little thing here is the what is the sewage pump and it's basically on the surface is I believe that is probably meant to be an air vent uh, you know or, or, or a, a manhole access uh, for maintenance if somebody ever needs to get inside of it wouldn't want to get inside of it but 
people in real life do have to do those things uh, so um, you know so it drops down and then as we could see if we were building a new one the input is at the bottom of this um, it's a sort of inverted tower if you like it's it's like a tower underground um, you know 15 meters is is, is quite a, a height and um, the input as we can see from those pipes is at the bottom the sewage is then um, brought up the the, the 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 chamber to the output which is at the top so what it does is allows the the sewage pipes then to to go um, downhill so you can see that that sort of semicircle thing I think it's a bit strange that the, the sewage pipes here sort of double back on themselves but anyway the the, the do that one is it comes from the output of this pump and it comes from an output which is very close to the surface and goes to the input of the other sewage pump which is 15 meters below the surface so that even if this is up a hill as long as the the, the difference between the two sewage pumps is not more than 15 meters that the, the sewage would still flow it's a little odd that the the pipe is nearly at the surface all the way around until it gets to this bit and then suddenly drops uh, I you know I think that's probably because they've built it in two segments and if we were to to delete that um, let's see what would happen if we if we built rebuilt it and built it all in one go you see there it 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 uh, has a fairly smooth um, downward slope on it that the, the sewage would would flow down there so what the players had to do although the whole city is built on a hill the problem with this part of the city is we sort of reached the edge and we are sloped off quite a lot now you know it, it's it's got a sm um a slope on it all the way down this hill let me go above ground again uh, the, the whole city has this uh, slope down the hill but when we get to uh, around about this point it starts to become a little bit steeper and we get to this these points where you see the the red means it's too steep to build on so we get down to this uh, more steep part where it's down into this valley and um, because the sewage pipes are running along the edge of this this valley and you know the 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 here um the slope is a little bit difficult and they've had to put these sewage pipe uh, the sewage pumps in um several of them and of course they all cost uh, money and um you, you, if you're not really familiar with this they probably had to experiment with this and get it to work but the point is it did work you know um and uh, we've got sewage flowing through here and i had noted that i'd seen that there's sewage flowing through here i'd seen that uh, it all flows into this point at this switch um and by by this point we've got 37 cubic meters of sewage uh we're getting um a load coming down from the the branch on the left and stuff coming down from the branch on the right and then it all going down the hill so so i had said in probably in part three i think oh the sewage system is working and i didn't really focus so much on on this odd arrangement here i think it could have been done better i think if the player had appreciated the slopes here that part of this is uh, uphill and then part of it is down then it goes uphill and then downhill um i think they they, they could have avoided that and put the sewage pipes in uh, in a better position where where they could have 
use the slope a lot better. Um, anyway, um, the, the point is there is a problem with the sewage, despite the fact that, you know, when we, when we, when we look along here, we see that the sewage is flowing and is, is working. If I unpause the game, what we see is it's green and amber. And when it's amber, there's quite a lot in, in the pipes. When it's green, the, the, the stuff in the pipes, but it's well within the, the limit. Um, it never goes red. Uh, so there's, there's loads and loads of capacity because again, most of this has been built with large pipes that were completely unnecessary. Um, you know, it, the, the most I say here, and, and of course this is the, from this point onwards, all of the sewage of the, the city flows through this switch. And this switch shows that it has 33.46 meters, okay, cubic meters, 35, 28, 29, 36.97. So, so we, that's, I think the highest, so 37.42 is the highest. Uh, do we ever go above that? Do we ever go above uh, 38 or, or 39 or anything like that? Doesn't look like it. Uh, sewage, by the way, you can see it's very off and on, uh, even more so than power and uh, water. Um, it sort of switches, you know, you, you can go some of these where there'll be one second, there'll be no, no sewage flowing through. A second or two later, there will be uh, 10, 20 cubic meters. Um, so that's the nature of sewage that it does that. So to monitor it, really, you have to have the game playing. So I keep having to unpause here to see that because, say here, it looks, oh, that's quite low. Uh, there's loads of capacity. But of course, a second or two later, there will be two or three times as much sewage going through here. And anyway, there's still sewage coming through here. And this is the busiest point of the sewage system from here downwards. Um, so um, so we said, well, the sewage system works. So why have we got a problem with those two shops? And when we come up here, what we do is we go to this shopping center, the small shopping center, and we go to the, the you know, we've got icons to show us where's our power coming from. And we've got two power connections, the yellow lines. Where's our heating coming from? We've got one red line, that's that heating exchanger that wasn't working. Where's our water coming from? We've got two substations two water substations that we're connected to. Um, where's our sewage coming from? And what we find is the sewage is coming from that one to the left. And there's only one connection and it is 176 meters away. So it's well within range. But what we can see is the sewage connection, which is down here. Let me just see where it is. There is a sewage uh, here, I think it's this one. There's a sewage tank here that was close to the, uh, there was a little residence and there was the um, the water well and the water treatment plant. But it is too far away, the shop. So what's actually that connected to? Ah, okay, it can, it's still getting sewage in it even though we've deleted most of the buildings around here because it can just about connect to the hospital uh, the hospital doesn't need it anymore of course because the hospital presumably has two or three connections let me just check that so again we do it now some buildings have too many icons here and what you have to do is you have to go right to the end one where the three dots are as soon as you hover over the three dots you see more icons and there is the icon for sewage connections. So yes, the hospital has three sewage connections uh, that it can use, and some of its sewage is still going uh, down this hill to this one, which is why we're seeing still sewage um, that was flowing through this part of the sewage system. So despite the fact that the sewage pipes here were and let me go back underground. 
look how close those sewage pipes are to the shopping centre and yet those sewage pipes are not the sewage pipes that are being used by the, the, the shop. It uses, it connects, sorry, get the sewage. It connects to this um, sewage tank here. And when we click on that sewage tank, it is full. So what's happened is that sewage tank has filled up with 12 cubic meters and then all of the sewage tanks within the buildings so every building has its own internal sewage tank has then filled up and then we start getting this where it says sewage tank overfilled sewage is over uh, is uh, overflowing in the in the toilets and the, the the drains and things in the shop imagine that the state of this and uh, that's presenting a health risk so there's a, a health risk that will affect the health of anyone who works here. Maybe also the shoppers. I'm, I'm not absolutely sure about whether the shoppers would have the health affected. But certainly the workers. And fairly soon, I think workers start to say, no, I'm not going to work there. Uh, we're not going to go and work uh, in this, this shop. Now, I don't think we saw this uh, as clearly before because of course we had nobody working here. Uh, nobody was working here because it was cold. If they don't work here, they, they, they don't uh, go to work, they don't drink water and they don't produce sewage while they're at work. Um, plus it takes some time for uh, the sewage tank to fill up, the internal tank within, within the building, because first of all, uh, the shared sewage tank on the on the system that has to fill up and then all of the other buildings around it the internal tank has to fill so when we looked at this shop before it was probably maybe a month maybe a bit longer ago in the summer um, it probably still didn't have its sewage tank full however the sewage system had a problem already by that stage and we were unaware of it now, um, once it's pointed out, of course, that that sewage tank is zero meters, and I will let the game play, so we would actually say uh, zero cubic meters, zero cubic meters, zero cubic meters. So we've, we've noted that the sewage tank uh, system can be off and on, off and on, but this one isn't. At zero all the time. I mean, just compare it with one of the ones, say, up here next to the prison. Say it, it's five, five, zero, eight, zero, five. So it can it can drop to zero, but within a couple of seconds, it it then has sewage in it. You know, so it doesn't ever stay at zero for very long. This one does stays there and i can assure you i could watch this for days and weeks and it will stay at zero and of course when we click on it and confirm that it is full 12 of 12 uh, you say that the problem now you think okay well but this must be causing other problems in the city and unfortunately yes it is because the swimming pool isn't yet referring to this but uh, let me just check ah okay so the swimming pool has two sewage connections so even though the one closest to it is full and doesn't work uh, it has another one it can send its sewage uh, up to the one here next to the orphanage what about some of these other buildings the restaurant i think this will probably have two no, the restaurant only has one. And there we go. There's, the restaurant has the message now. Sewage tank overfilled health risk. And sooner or later, we'll get to the same point with this, that people will not go in this building. What about the cinema? Just the one connection. And the concert hall. Just the one connection. 
So the the concert hall, strangely, doesn't report a problem with sewage. It tells us missing stuff. I'm not sure we've we've looked at this in the previous episodes, to be honest. Um, and when I've been looking at this offline before before I recorded this video, I must say I thought that this concert hall was not working because of sewage, but it has another problem, and we'll come back to that uh, and and fix that um, soon enough. Hopefully, we'll have time in the, this episode to do that. Um, It'll not take us long to fix this problem with the, the sewage. Uh, but I hope this discussion of the issues uh, helps people also understand how, how this all works. Um, but, um, you know, it is missing staff. Uh, but it isn't missing them because of sewage. It's missing them because of another issue. All of the buildings around here are having the problem that this sewage tank is not emptying. And it, it's actually quite difficult, of course, to, to spot it. Can you see, when we are above land, there's so much going on in this part of the city that the, the, these bridges across here, there's lots of paths, there's a number of buildings to spot that there's even a, a sewage tank in the middle of this anyway, and that the, um, the overlay is showing 0, 0.00 cubic metres. Um, I think that's not easy to spot. Um, you know, if you if you didn't know it's there to look out for it. We now know it's there. We know that that, that is a problem and uh, we know we, we have to fix it. So why is it a problem? And let me just go back uh, in the underground view so that we see the sewage pipe that is coming from the sewage tank. And that looks like it's all connected there and we come around here and it's all connected so it's not like we had with the, the the hot water pipes where it wasn't actually connected it was close to to where it needed to be but it wasn't actually connected at the end of the day because you couldn't connect a large heating pipes to a small heating pump but this is connected and it should be working. And, and we can see that the switch it's connected to has um, sewage flowing through it, 19.78. Another switch very close to it has 14 uh, flowing through it. So everything is working here except for this one pipe that comes down here past the university to the um to this this tank that's not working now let me come back above ground so that we can absolutely see this and what we see is the root of that which went you know you can you can follow the root because it has these white um again these are sort of air vents you see them on the ground so you can actually see the root of the the, the sewage pipe that's underground um we can see that we're pretty much following this contour line. You see there's a the, the thicker yellow contour line which comes round here and comes round the back of the swimming pool and then round the corner past the university and underneath these heating pipes. So the I'll just go back below ground so you absolutely see that again and you see uh, the sewage tank the sewage pipe sorry is pretty much following the contour so it should be flat and and, and i think it is that potentially is a, a slight problem that it's it's sort of flat and it's not particularly going downhill the problem comes when we come up here and what we do is we get to here and what we see is it turns and now instead of following the, the contours, it crosses over a contour and then it crosses over another contour. In other words, it goes uphill. So let me just confirm that. And we can, we've shown before that we've got this measuring tool 
turn the measuring tool on and when that is enabled we see the terrain height when we hover our mouse over uh, the, uh, any part of the ground it shows us how, how high we are so this pipe there's the um, which is the let me just check if I get the right one here terrain height where this sep where the sewage tank is is 87.6 now when we follow that route round it's around about 86 87 88 um, all the way around here as I said it's fairly flat the the, the, the ground the, the root of the of the pipe but then it goes to 88 well 87.99 when nearest dam at 88 there with there 88 and then it goes to 89.6 92 93.9 and then finally this is the switch here that it connects to and that switch is at 95.5 so absolutely confirmed that that pipe is going uphill at this part of its journey and the sewage will not flow up that hill the only way to have done this would have been to put a, a pump in here um, but it would have it it might have been problematic to do that but it might have worked so to fix this what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a, a slightly different approach and I'm going to delete the, the, the pipes here, the sewage pipes. I mean, just make sure I get the delete the right thing. I'm going to delete this branch down to about here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this pipe here. Um, sort of there and I'm going to put a sewage switch in and we need to make sure that this has has three inputs and one output and we want to make sure that the output uh, points down the hill which is towards us so that it, it, it goes in the right direction yeah, build that and now Put the pipes in and i assume you've used big pipes here again so yeah that big uh, snaps to the existing pipe that's there so that has let that build so that has re-established our main uh, our main sewage flow you see that the sewage is flowing through that switch now and now we have a way to connect this pipe that we we broke off here so instead of going up the hill we're going to turn and we're going to go down the hill and connect into this switch and there that's building and that's it built and there's sewage and look what's happened is it's gone red and then all the way down the hill has gone red why is that well this is a big pipe and it holds uh, quite a lot of uh, sewage normally and that pipe is completely full and the reason for that is suddenly let me just go to the um, the sewage tank here and what we see is that sewage tank is emptying but not just that all of the buildings that are connected to this that had their internal sewage tanks full are now uh, emptying out all down this pipe uh, at the same time so that that uh, is is red and let's just say okay the sewage tank is emptied now all of the buildings attached to it will have emptied and now we go back to a normal sewage floor it's uh it's it's white it's quite a low flow down that pipe and the sewage tank now is zero zero and then it'll go to 
five, probably. Five, yeah. Zero, probably five again. Or seven, okay. So it will flash off and on. You know, there'll, there'll, there'll be some um, uh, sewage that'll, that'll drain into this tank and then that'll go down the pipes and, and, and take away. Now let us go above land, above ground again. Uh, take the contours off because we, we're not interested in them anymore. Uh, we have sewage flowing now out of that tank and down the hill and um, shopping centre. And the message that its tank was, sewage tank was full, has gone. Same with the grocery store, the uh, cinema, the restaurant. Uh, the problems with these have all disappeared. But the problem with the concert hall hasn't. And and as I said, the, the problem with the concert hall isn't because people have stopped working here because of sewage. Um, nor is it a problem with, with heating, by the way. So it, it, it's got two heating connections. It's got water connections and it's got power connections got four four power connections um so there's one other thing that i need to do that I, that I should do i'm not sure it's essential uh but i put a new switch in oh, actually you've got switches already there and i don't think you've got um yeah you haven't you haven't got you haven't got footpaths in to these i can't remember whether a sewage switch can go on fire i suspect it can't but the other thing that i noticed here is um this power substation isn't connected up to the roads so i'll just put a dirt road up here um a, a power substation definitely can go on fire uh so we need the to allow the the fire trucks to get here um it does actually appear slightly odd that you have a power substation here but this the, i think that's because does a sewage pump need power i think it i think it almost certainly does doesn't it let me just click on one of them no they don't need power so i'm not absolutely sure why you've put power out here what is this actually connected to? Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Sorry. Right. A sewage pump needs power. Sewage switches don't. Sewage switch is totally passive. It's basically a, 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 just a, a connection between uh, two or more pipes uh that just allows them to flow into each other the but the sewage pump has to have power and you do have one okay so you've had to put in a sewage pump to make this work here um slightly odd given that the fact that this is all all pretty much appears to be downhill that there's just this one little bit where you've had to put a a sewage pump to get it to go uphill so it's just this one small segment um i assume ah okay you know what again this is where i would have you i would have used the contours so you've gone down here where you've gone downhill and then you've gone here where you've gone uphill uh, if you'd gone across here you could have avoided that so you would not have only avoided having to put the switch in you would have avoided having to put the the power substation in so we have fixed the problem with the sewage i suspect we should break there and um, uh, come back and look at the water I, I think that should be enough for today we can look at uh, a couple of other things but i think we've probably had more than enough so thank you for for listening to me my channel's canny gaming i'm mark i'm out of here thanks